Hey folks, I want to talk about how the pyramids were built. Today, the pyramids of Giza are a great mystery as to how they were built. But are they really a mystery? Now, uh, these pyramids were attributed to certain pharaohs. And there are some people that um, believe that that is incorrect and that these um, pyramids did not or were not um, built by Khufu and Khafre and Menakari. And they um, conjecture that these pyramids are much older. Now that's possible. Um, but what's interesting to me is that uh, the ancient Greek scholar Diodorus Siculus describes exactly how these pyramids were made. So I'd like to read some of this um, to you from Diodorus Siculus' Library of History. And before I do, I just want to mention I have a picture of the people of the Nias Island in Indonesia moving a megalith in 1915. And uh, it shows how they, they um, are able to do it through manual labor. And you can see that there's uh, wood uh, timber used as rollers underneath. But let's, um, let's get into what Diodorus Siculus says about these um, pyramids. Okay, on page 215 of volume 1. The eighth king, Chemis of Memphis, ruled 50 years and constructed the largest of the three pyramids which are numbered among the seven wonders of the world. These pyramids, which, which are situated on the side of Egypt, which is towards Libya, are 120 states from Memphis and 45 from the Nile. And by the immensity of their structures and the skill shown in their execution, they fill the beholder with wonder and astonishment. For the largest is in the form of a square and has a base length on each side of seven plethora and a height of over six plethora. It, is also it also gradually tapers on the top, where each side is six cubits long. The entire construction is of hard stone, which is different to work, but lasts forever. For though uh, no fewer than a thousand years have elapsed, as they say, to our lifetime, or as some writers have it, more than 3,400, the stones remain to this day still preserving their original position and the entire structure undecayed. It is said that the stone was conveyed over a great distance from Arabia and that the construction was effected by means of mounds since cranes had not yet been invented at that time. And the most remarkable thing in the account is that through the construction uh, were on such a great scale and the country round about them consists of nothing but sand. Not a trace remains either of any mound or of any dressing of the stones, so that they do not have the appearance of being the slow handiwork of men, but look like a sudden creation, as though they had been made by some god and set down bodily in the surrounding sand. Certain Egyptians would make a marvel out of these things, saying that inasmuch as the mounds were built of salt and saltpeter when the river was let in it melted them down and completely effaced them without the intervention of man's hand however there is not a word of truth in this but the entire material for the mounds raised as they were by the labor of many hands was returned by the same means to the place from which it came for 360,000 men, as they say, were employed on that undertaking, and the whole structure was scarcely completed in 20 years. Upon the death of the king, his brother Saffron succeeded 
to the throne. And ruled 56 years, but some say that it was not the brother of Chemis, but his son named uh, Shabri who took, who took the throne. All writers have agreed that it was the next ruler who, emulating the example of his predecessor, built the second pyramid, which was the equal of the one just mentioned and the skill displayed in its execution, but far behind it in size, since its base length on each side is only a stade. And an inscription on the larger pyramid gives the sum of money expended on it, since the writing sets forth that on the vegetables and uh, purgatives for the workmen, there were, they were paid uh, um, over 1,600 talents. The smaller bears no inscription, but has steps cut into one side. And though the two kings built the pyramids to serve as their tombs, in the event, neither of them was buried in them. For the multitudes, because of the hardships which they had endured in the building of them, and the many cruel and violent acts of these kings, were filled with anger against them who had caused their suffering and openly threatened to tear their bodies asunder and cast them in despite, uh, um, despite out of the tombs. Consequently, each ruler, when dying, enjoyed, enjoined under his kinsmen to bury his body secretly in an unmarked place. After these rulers, Mycerinus, to whom some give the name Men uh, Carinus, a son of the builder of the first pyramid, became a king. He undertook the construction of the third pyramid, but died before the entire structure had been completed. The base length of each side he made three plethora, and for fifteen courses he built the walls of black stone, like that found about Thebes. But the rest of it he filled out with stone, like that found in the, in the other pyramids. In size, the structure falls behind those mentioned above but far surpasses them in the skill displayed in its execution and great cost of the stone. And on the north side of the pyramid is an inscription stating that its builder was Mycerinus. This ruler, they say, out of indignation at the cruelty of his predecessors, aspired to live an honorable life, and one devoted to the welfare of his subjects. And he continually did many other things which might best help to evoke the goodwill of the people towards himself. And more especially when he gave audiences, he spent a great amount of money giving presents to such honest men as he thought he had not feared in the courts of law as they deserved. Okay, I'm going to stop. Now, I just gave you um, information by this ancient Greek scholar who lived over 2,000 years ago. He knew about all three pyramids. He knew about the inscriptions. He knew what the measurements were. And apparently it couldn't have been covered up in sand um, because he knew all of the measurements and he knew all about it. Um, so when um, Napoleon, I guess, marched into Egypt, and um, rediscovered them, it was a different story. Now, I want to also point out that he had talked, Diodorus um, Siculus had talked about water, and he didn't think it was true, but there are some um, you know, theories about water staining on these pyramids, and it says, um, again, um, when the river was let in, it melted them down and completely effaced them without the intervention of man's hand. And that might explain um, some of these other theories of, of why there's some water um, indication on these pyramids that people thought was rainwater. But this may have been um, just simply river water. So I've just shown you that the, you know why there was no burial in those in those pyramids because um, the the pharaohs the first two were hated by how hard they made the people work to build them and so they had to have their bodies buried secretly. I just talked about you know the possible um, source for the water staining. 
I just talked about the inscriptions to prove that these pharaohs did build them. And I just explained to you that they used mounds and moved the rock from Arabia. And when they were done, the mounds were gone. So, uh, and I also ex t told you that the number of men was 360,000. And it took 20 years for that first pyramid. So this is how the pyramids were built. I know that there's a lot of um, talk about ancient aliens and, you know, uh, lost technology. Well, yeah, it's kind of a lost technology because, um, you know, this is in this book that I just read from you out of the Loeb Library. I just read to you how these pyramids were built and who built them and why there's no body. there were no bodies in them and where the possible water damage could have come from. So that is your answer. And if you think that ancient aliens or any other similar show will ever have me on their show, um, you, you're completely wrong because they'll never have a person like me who points out the information, backs it up, and puts an end to the nonsense of the lies that have been going on on this planet. And they'll never have a person like me that exposes the cult of Jupiter Sabazius and all of your religions and uh, this lost history. Uh, if you want to write to these people and ask them to have me on, go ahead. I've tried to get on these shows um, as well as alternative shows to get this information out and none of them will respond or have me on. I just told you how the pyramids were built. I just told you where it was written about. I just gave you all of the evidence to prove all of the, to, to give understanding to all of the mysteries. And now you have it. And that is Diodorus Siculus's Library of History, Volume 1, pages 215 to 221. I gave you copies of it on this YouTube video. Thank you.